Uh, to this class, when I talk, make mention of skills, basically what we are saying is that tools that we use, knowing how to use cybersecurity tools. Because if you're talking about skills and you're talking, you're talking about practical, it means you are using something to achieve something. And basically what I'm saying is that we are using some tools to solve some problem. We are using tools to detect threat, threat vulnerabilities. Um, looking at threats, you know, we want to deal threat basically is anything that is um that can possibly you know cause a compromise within your network so threat is anything that is, is like a potential danger to your network or to your security so in this cyber security case i would say threat is anything that is you know about is that is about to break the confidentiality the integrity or make your systems not available so anything that is threatening the confidentiality of your data Anything that is threatening your privacy, anything that is a potential danger to uh, or to cause to your privacy, or something that can cause your privacy to be you know exposed to break confidentiality of your data is a threat. Anything that is um, going to make your data susceptible to compromise, you know, altering of data without permission, that is breaking the integrity of your data is a threat. Anything that can possibly make your system not to be available. For example, if you are using your computer and suddenly you cannot log in, you are trying to, your password is suddenly no longer working, or you put on your computer and, and you're seeing a message that your drive has been encrypted. If you want to have access to it, maybe that, that is, we all know what ransom, that's an example of a ransomware. Something that can make your system not to be available again is a threat. So confidentiality, integrity, and the availability, anything that is going to make those three things to be broken is a threat. Now, in the network security, there are some common threats. You know, in cyber security, there are some common threats that you'll be coming across. The first one I have here is man in the middle. Man in the middle, just like the name sounds, it means somebody standing in the middle of two people. You know, so there's a communication from a source and a destination, you know, and then in between the source. You know, let me use the source and the target or the origin and the destination in between somebody is a man is standing in the middle interrupting the communication basically that is what is man in the middle so and how does that work it means that now i'm talking to you you guys are not here we are not in the same place i'm trying to pass across a message it is possible that somebody can end time between what i say and what you hear and then alter what i say for example, in this age of AI that we have deep fakes and all those of somebody can possibly get in between my communication and yours and distort what I say and change my voice, you know, have some of the things to it or, or put image and then you'll be hearing something. So that's man in the middle. So it's a very common trait. It happens a lot, you know, in network, in network security. So and those are one of the things that you need to understand how to, you know, um, detect when you are carrying out your cyber security work for example if you're a SOC analyst if you are setting up a, a sim system and you are monitoring you can depend on the kind of sim tool you are using you can see activities within your network that suggest that there's somebody that is altering communication for example now if your ip address is trying to communicate with an ip address and you look at the logs of the communication maybe you do a packet a capture of the network and you see that some ip address some uh, what they call it some mac address in there some mac address are being altered you know are seen handshake between some domains or between some end user devices you can be suspicious that certain people are present within this network that are not supposed to be so that is how man in the middle works man in the middle is basically intercepting so these are part of the things that or one of the things that we're going to be fishing out within us using uh now practicals or in the hands-on skills we are going to be if this video has taught you anything and you are interested in learning for you to be able to apply it as a cyber security expert you know? so if, sign up for our one-on-one -on -one hands on cyber security course you know its link is in the video description we are going to take you through everything dns spoofing. dns spoofing is talking about um altering the dna so we all know that every website that you visit www.gtb.com you know it's going to be that gtb.com computer will change it to ip address it will change it to some you know uh numbers 
which will not be the system will understand. So DNS is basically talking about domain name service. The domain names is the www.gtb.com. So the service, the server that does the translation of this www to IP address is the domain server. It resolves the IP address into, I mean, it resolves the domain names into IP address that computers can understand. So DNS spoofing is talking about a hacker or a threat whereby they, they fake the DNS service. So instead of you know you getting the actual DNS of www.gtv.com that you are supposed to use, you know somebody spoofs it and you are getting the wrong DNS. Your DNS may have a, uh, I think it may be resolving to a different IP address. You know instead of you getting the when you type gtv.com instead of you going to gtv.com the original IP address of gtv.com it may be misleading you, redirecting you to a different, you know. IP address. So it's spoofing your DNS, it's making, it's altering your domain name. Denial of service. DDoS is distributed denial of service. So when you talk about denial of service, it means when you are denying someone's service, it means you are not, you are making the service unavailable to the person. You are denying someone access. So, and the way it works is that if you have a website now and you cannot access the website, that means you are, that's basically denial of service. And that is, in fact, it's one of the most common, um, most common attacks that happened in 2024. It means a lot of times some website that you are trying to access and it's not available. It could have been a denial of service, especially in this in this our country, whereby a lot of time you are trying to visit some even some banks. There are some times that you are just trying, you are just wondering why is it not connecting? Why am I not getting it? It's because it may be because it's a denial of service. Some people have been attacking it. And what, how does this denial of service work? So basically, people generate fake traffic. You can imagine I have a website that I'm supposed to be serving 100 people, or 100 people are supposed to you know, have access. The capacity of my website can undo 100 people visiting the website at the same time. Or somebody now wants to carry out a denial of service attack on the website what we will now do basically is going to get like 200 or 300 people persons to be visiting the website at the same time so what do you think will happen when 300 people are trying to check a website that's only meant for a hundred person at the same time there's an overload there's too much traffic everything will the, the server will hang the system will you know break down it will not be able to handle it, it then nobody will be able to access the site okay so that is denial of service so when it's a distributed denial of service is a is a way is the is the way they conduct the strategy or the technique the way in which that denial of service is conducted it means that the attack is not coming from one source so in this in this case a a, a an, a, an hacker stays in one place and is controlling like 500 or 1000 or several other computers from his own from his own you know system and what is he doing is making those other computers that is connected to, to be sending to be trying to access a particular you know network or a particular website or a particular target so is distributing the the denial of service from is causing it to happen no it's not it's not it's not one person that is sending this in when it's distributed it means that i'm using different computers not just me maybe i connect i drop the virus on uh charts on your uh, computer i drop the virus on Jerry's computer and i'm controlling the two computers from here so as i'm sending my own uh 200 traffic per second i mean 200 clicks per second i'm making charles computer to, to be sending 200 i'm making their computer to, to be sending 200 so i'm coordinating so the denial service attack is not coming from one end so it's called distributed denial service These are common traits network security threats that we are looking at and if you are looking at this impact impact of is the steel that has service disruption or notarized access man, man in the middle is an example of an unauthorized access because what he's doing is he's stealing he's standing in between and is you know talking to people that they're not supposed to talk, talk to and also stealing of data man in the middle is doing that then you know service disruption and data theft so if you are going to look at the network traffic so for for a network threat going on 
for you to know what's going on, to know whether this um you have an idea of this man in the middle, whether his man in the middle is happening when whether data um DNA spoofing is ha is going on. You want to also capture um this denial of service, you want to see high traffic, you know. You need to analyze your network. So, and the tool that we use for analyzing network, not the only tool, the most common tool that the tool that is well, you know, mostly recognized. I think it's the most popular tool for network traffic. This is Wireshark. So, if you launch a Wireshark, for instance, now on your laptop, now you can pick a particular port, you know, or a particular uh, interface on your laptop, and tell the Wireshark to monitor all the in a, going in and coming out, all the traffic going in and coming out. For example, you can pick your Wi-Fi interface, you know, because mostly of the time we are collected through Wi-Fi these days. So you can also pick maybe your USB port, you can pick your uh, LAN port, if you have LAN port, you can pick any port on your device and tell Wireshark to monitor, to capture the traffic going on in and out of your system through. So when you capture this traffic, then the, the Wireshark allows you to be able to filter the traffic according to protocol. So when two devices are trying to communicate, they need to establish some standard of communication in order for them to understand each other. For example, now, as I'm speaking English now, it's, we, it's because we have agreed that we're going to have this class in English. So I need to speak English according to the English language grammar, you know, grammar rules. Because if I'm not speaking it properly, you may misunderstand me. So protocols are the things that you know devices usually use for communication. They guide the communication. They're like the rules guiding communication of devices. So, and then depending on the kind of communication you want to have. So for example, HTTP and HTTPS, they are for web communication. So when devices want to communicate and they want to share web websites, you know, communication, internet communication. You know, they want to be sharing things like you know HTML. You want to share web uh, web pages with each other. It's HTTP protocol that you use. So if you look at your traffic and you see any, you filter by HTTP. You say your Wireshark. You set the traffic in your Wireshark and you say, okay, Wireshark, I want to see all the HTTP communication. That means if you filter it and show you shows shows you all that is going on, then you will know that okay. All this communication, there are websites that you are opening on your laptop. So for every website, like I'm chatting with you on WhatsApp, I'm using Google, I'm visiting Yahoo, May, you will see it. It will filter it out and it show you all those communications that are using HTTP. Then we can filter according to another protocol, TCP is another common communication. So every service on your device that is using TCP to communicate, you can see it. Then you can see the DNS too. Remember what I said, DNS. DNS is that server that resolves your domain name. So for every communication, that for every website that you are opening, there is a service in your laptop that is trying to resolve those domain names. And it's using its protocol. So the communication between your device and the DNS server will be following that protocol, DNS. So if you filter your, your traffic with Wireshark and you look for all DNS communication, you will see all the DNS servers. So if somebody is spoofing your DNS or is doing something with your DNS services, you will see it in the Wireshark that, okay, ah, I'm not communicating with this DNS server. I'm, how come I'm seeing it inside my traffic? Then you know that something is going on. The same thing too, if you filter by HTTP and you open your own browser, you see that all the websites you are looking at, the HTTP, filter when you filter the traffic what you are seeing in the wireshark is different from what you are actually doing in your system then you can know that something is going on behind the scenes so that's how you analyze network with Wireshark. and then when you, basically you are looking for suspicious patterns when you are seeing unusual outbound connections so if you are sending message out and you are you, are, you know you are browsing you on your browser you are opening you open only google but in the Wireshark, you see that your computer is communicating with Yahoo, is communicating with Telegram. You can be shocked, you can be surprised that no, there's something suspicious happening here. And then you need to check it. Maybe somebody is trying to, somebody is already hacking into your system, or your device has some virus or some malware that is carrying out something behind the scenes. So that's how you analyze traffic. So this is another 
uh, Anton's skill, or this is another practical aspect of what we are going to be doing. If you have enjoyed or learned one of the things in this video, please like and share. And you are coming on for the first time, please do subscribe to this channel. Thank you.